In this video, I want to show you how you can quickly and easily visualize your financial data using Power BI. I want to show you how you can get your finance data using Yahoo Finance, and also want to show you how you can visualize it into candlesticks in Power BI. All of that and more, so without further ado, let's get started. Hi, my name is Fernan and welcome to the Solutions Abroad YouTube channel where we cover tips, tricks, and best practices when working with Power BI. I upload new videos every week, so make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when a new one is out. So there are lots of resources online that you can use to get financial data for free. One excellent place that you can get your data from is Yahoo Finance, which gives you summaries, analysis, and statistics that you can use for the majority of the financial instruments that you want to track. Along with these summaries, Yahoo Finance also allows you to look at the historical data and also download this data, which we can take advantage of with Power BI. So here are the historical prices for the Amazon stock. And here you can see under historical data, we have a list of all the different prices for the different dates, along with volumes which we can download simply using this button. We're gonna try and download, let's say the last six months. I'm gonna change the time period here to the last six months, keep it to historical prices and we'll keep the frequency to the daily. So from here, when you hit download, it will download a file that you can use in Power BI. But a better way to do this is to right click and copy link address. And the reason is that we want to continually download the data from the Yahoo Finance so that when we refresh our reports in the future, we will get the most recent uh, prices on dates that uh, is available. So now that we've copied the link address, let's open Power BI Desktop from here. We'll go to Get Data and then from here we select Web. In the URL, we simply paste what's in our clipboard and there's quite a lot of information in here, which we'll come back to later in this demo. But for now, we'll just hit OK. And here you go. So this gives us a full list of all the different daily prices for uh, the Amazon stock. So from here, we'll hit Transform. And then we'll just name this Amazon. And we'll clean this up a little bit. So we'll promotes the first row as headers. Just change the types to the correct types like this. So you will have the dates as a date column and all these different prices as numbers. So here we hit close and apply and you're pretty much ready to visualize uh, your data. So the next thing that we can do is to visualize this data into a candlestick form. So the candlestick chart is a very common chart to use to visualize uh, financial uh, price changes in your data. It essentially allows you to quickly and easily interpret financial data in simple graphs like the candlestick chart. Now, currently there's no out of the box visual available in Power BI to visualize candlesticks. However, there are a couple of custom visuals that we can use to visualize the candlestick chart. One of them is from OKViz, so I will show you how to import that from here. So first you need to make sure that you have a uh, Power BI account and you are signed in in your Power BI desktop. And then from the visualizations, you will need to select get more visuals. And then from here, we will simply look for candlestick. This is the one that I'm talking about, candlestick by OKViz. If we add this, this will import this visual into our Power BI report here, and you'll see it available to use on the right-hand side. So we'll simply add it here, make it slightly bigger, and then we'll just fill in the wells to visualize the candlestick. So dates would be in the axis, open, uh, we need to close as well, high, and low, and there we go. So to keep the explanation simple in terms of how to read the candlestick chart, each candlestick in the chart represents the price change within that day. 
So each tick at the moment in our visual is representing a day because the time frame that we got from Yahoo Finance is in days, but you can have, let's say, an hourly uh, time frame or maybe a weekly or a monthly time frame for your candlestick charts. So in the candlestick, there are four general things that you look for. The open price, which is the price that the stock started on the day. The close is what the price was at the end of the day. The high, which is the highest price it reached during the day, which is going to be the wick of the candle, the, the straight lines. And then you have obviously the low, which is the lowest point that the price went to for that day. The body is the middle area of the candle, and it basically tells you if the price in that day was bullish, which is green, or bearish, which is red. Now that we've linked our Power BI reports in Yahoo Finance data for Amazon, let's try to understand the query that we've pasted because you might think that hitting the refresh button here will mean that it will give you always the last six months uh, like we did the filter earlier but that's not exactly the case well not yet anyway so i'm going to hit transform here and we'll go back to the source here and i'll click the cog icon and from here you will see that the url has a lot of parameters here which defines the uh, which ticker you're after, period one, which is the Unix code of the day, uh, the first day of six months ago, and period two would be obviously the Unix code of the current day today, and the interval is one day. So if you're not familiar with URL parameters, so what that means is every time we send a query, so when we refresh the reports, this query gets sent back into Yahoo Finance, which tells Yahoo Finance, okay, give me the Amazon for between these two periods, period one and period two, and give it to me in a one day interval uh, format. So that's what we will get. Now, because these period one and period two are specific dates in a calendar, it might not look like it because this format is an epoch time format, which I can show you what that date actually is. So if we go to an online converter, like epoch converter, and let's paste this timestamp, it will just give me today, which is the 15th of October. And if I show you what period one is, that would have been the same day six months ago. So 15th of April, 2022. So what that means is as long as we are able to change what the period one and period two is dynamically, we are able to constantly query the Yahoo Finance to give us the time range that we need for uh, our uh, stock. Now, there are many ways that you can do this in DAX. You can create and use Power Query or parameters to create some dynamic variables within your URL. And I've covered something similar in the past where I used parameters to dynamically change what the values are in these uh, URL parameters. But we won't go through that today because there is an easier method for you to get a dynamic value in this, uh, uh, in this URL. So the trick that I found is to actually get a date that is far, far in the future. So um, what I mean is if we get a date that is, let's say, we want to get 2029, 20, let's say. So if I hit human date to timestamp, it will give me an epoch timestamp for that date, which is uh, the 10th of April, 2029. I'll simply copy that and change the period two corresponding to that date. So what it does, and if you hit okay, you're not gonna see any change here, but that's because Yahoo Finance will only always give you the latest data available if it's ready. So because we have the period two to be in the future, every time we hit the refresh button now in our Power BI report, it should give us the latest data available, which would be either today or the previous day. So if you hit close and load, that should be pretty much ready to go. Now from here, a good setup to think about 
is to have this report automatically refreshing so that you can get the latest data available for your stock. And in fact, I covered that, uh, how to do it quite easily in a different video. So go check that out if you haven't yet. And that's really it for this video. I hope you now know how easy it is to import your finance data from a website like Yahoo Finance into Power BI so you can visualize it for yourself. Thanks for watching. As usual, give this video a like if you found it useful. Give it a dislike if you didn't so not to do better for next time. Ask your questions in the comment section box below so I can help you and you can help others. If you like this video, we have a Patreon page where you can support the channel and get exclusive perks like early access, demo files, and credits at the end of these videos. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.